post game and pre game and also post game about the way you guys got over the game two loss. You guys talked about how it started really on the flight home, like calling you, calling Pat Fab on, trying to drive, drive home late or early Wednesday morning. Uh, you talked about kind of what he said, but when did you feel like through that conversation you felt like, okay, we're past this, we're past a really heartbreaking loss? Um, I mean, <clears throat> after the flight, after the flight. Um, you know, we were on the plane, we talked about it, um, we hashed it out, um, and immediately we got ready for game three. Um, simple as that, we had to move on. I thought we did a great job of moving on. Um, I moved on. Um, I knew I had to be better. I have to be better. Um, and so, um, that was just, everything was just put in, in going into game three. Um, all my energy was, was uh, directed um, towards a, a better game in game three. Is that unique at all, Coach? Um, I mean, I think it's just it's, it's special that uh, you know just the relationship I have with T um, and the relationship T Lou has with every individual on his team um, in general. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, it just says a lot about him and his leadership. Go ahead, Amy. Hey, PG, we're going to go on the Zoom to Ramona. Go ahead, Ramona. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good. Um, hey. Hey, I'm just wondering about your relationship with Reggie. I know you guys have been friends for a number of years, going all the way back to like his rookie year or something. Do you think, you know, one, you get to play with him after all these years, you now he's not his teammate, but just how has that bond built over the years and how is that translating now on the court? Um, I mean, the bond has is, is always been great. Um, you know, Reggie is a, a, a real time brother. Um, you know, he lived with me, <laughs> uh, he's been around my kids, my daughters love him. They adore him, um, you know, and so uh, he's family. My parents love him. Um, you know, he knows uh, there's, there's so many people down the list in my family alone that he can call um, if he ever needed anything. Um, and uh, it's, it's vice versa with his family. So um, it's, 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 it's a real brotherhood. Um, that's my guy, um, and it's translated on the court. Um, I trust him. He's becoming one of the best closers um, in this game, and um, you know it's, it's, it's just it's, it's, it's special to be able to share a corporate ridge. Oh, just a quick, Bob. Is it you know, his background? Like he's moved around so much. Is it? Do you think maybe it's because he was kind of an army brat? Like that, that's why you guys got so close. Now that you kind of become his sort of NBA family. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we we just hit it off um, from from day one. You know, he's just a cool dude. He was, he was chill, um, you know, and uh, he, he's just a great person, great human being. And, you know, I just felt his energy, um, and, and I thought that was everything. He was just a great human being. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. We're going to stay on the Zoom and go to Rachel. Go ahead, Rachel. Hey, um, just wanted to ask you a little bit more about Kawhi. I know that he came down at halftime again uh, to talk to you guys. What help is that to have someone who sees the game the way he does, who's watching from the side, um, kind of be with you guys at halftime of these home games? And how much are you two talking, um, just texting or, or talking kind of through the series? Yeah, I mean, we talk, uh, <clears throat> we talk after every game, um, you know, uh, the two games in Phoenix. Uh, you know, I, I reached out to him. He, he'll text me after the game. We'll talk. Um, we'll go over what we see and what we saw that night. Um, and so he's he's very much a part of this team um, uh, without being able to, to play right now. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just great to have his mind um, and his presence uh, still a part of this game, part of this team. Um, it's great to see him in the locker room. Um, and more so, we're just happy that, you know, we, we just care about his well-being. That's that's what's most important. Uh, whether he he can play, whether he can't play, um, we we just happy for his 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 overall health um, and his well-being. So um, you know, it, it's just great to see him. He was in the locker room. He was sharing his thoughts once again, and um, you know, a lot of stuff that he said. I went out and, and you know was, was trying to put it into a plan. Wow. Is there anything specific that he's good at noting? Just either because. He's used to being the center of attention the way you are. I mean, is there anything that sort of he can give you that other people can't? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, <clears throat> he's just giving me his, his, giving me his perspective on um, the attention that I'm, that I'm, you know, having on the court. 
Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it was, you know, the guys are doing this, they're doing that. When you drive, they're, you know, they're, he was just telling me rotations, what to look for, what's open, what's available. Um, and so, you know, it gave me a good game plan going into the second half to what to look for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Paul, after game two, you had said, if anything, we're more confident being in this position again because we've done it two times before. Did tonight feel different, though, as far as on that like, game three, you guys won? Because, like, yes, you guys have been through game seven and then clinched in game six last round, but it felt like tonight you guys were really playing to keep your season alive the way you scrapped and held that energy and that effort for so long. Uh, no, I didn't feel different. Um, it was just uh, another approach. We knew we had to take care of home court. Um, and, you know, this is a scrappy team. Uh, we have to match their physicality. I thought we did that. We have to match their scrappiness. I thought we did that. Um, and that's really the key. Uh, we, we can't allow this team to play harder than us. And um, I thought that was just the way we approached tonight. Go ahead, Bob. Speaking of playing harder and everything, it seemed like the Vincent came out and had a different kind of energy to start this game, especially with the way game two ended. How did you all support him, get him ready to play tonight? And what do you think the impact uh, that he had was on the floor throughout the game? Yeah, I thought he was big in the middle. Um, you know, he rebounded the ball for us at a high level. Um, I thought his presence uh, was great um, on, on guards' drives. You know, he, he just made it tough to finish around the rim. And, um, you know, that's what we need from Big Zoo. Um, I thought he was great. I thought he was special. And, and, and I thought he was a big reason why we won tonight. Is there like a readjustment uh, being that he didn't play so much uh, in the first two series and now he's he has to be on the floor more because of how good Aiden is? Yeah, I mean, every series is, is, is different. Every series is different. Um, you know, it's... it's it's chess at this at this point, you know what I mean? And so, um, you know, Zoo is called on to, to be a big part of the series. And um, again, we don't need nights like, like how he had tonight. Um, you know, if we want a shot at, at advancing to the next round. Go ahead, we're gonna go back to Zoo. Go ahead, Amy. Okay, hey, PG, we're gonna go to Mark Schwartz. Go ahead, Mark. Paul, well, that epic shot, the half court shot at the end of the third quarter, man, 1.1 second. People went to get a beer. I mean, they were done with that quarter, but you weren't done with it. Take me through the whole process with the two bounces, the dribble, the sideline, and just making that shot at game speed, as opposed to we saw you do it pregame, where you were just stepping into it at the court. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a reason why I shoot it uh, in my pregame. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just more so for a feel. If I get those shots in the game, um, you know, I, I want to have some type of feel on the range of that shot. So I practice it every time um, when I'm when I'm doing my pregame shooting. Uh, tonight it, it, it helped. It came into effect. Um, but I just wanted to get as much space as, as I possibly could before I touched the ball and the, and the clock started. Um, so I, I kind of let it bounce, try to get as, as you know as much space up the floor as I could, and um, you know I, I let it fly, let it fly, and. Uh, um, I was able to make the shot. At what point when the ball left your hand were you confident that that was going in the basket? And did you at any point call glass? Uh, I didn't call glass. Uh, but, I mean, I, I, I felt great about the shot. Um, I felt that it was strong, but I felt that it was, um, you know, it, I, I felt it had a chance to go in. And, um, you know, I knew the angle that I shot it at. Um, that it was going to hit the backboard. And, um, man, uh, it didn't make many tonight, but that was one that, uh, that, that we needed, and uh, I thought it gave us great momentum. Last quick thing, you blew a kiss right after you went to the huddle. Who were you blowing a kiss to? Uh, my girl and my babies. Sweet. Thanks. Go ahead, Andrew. PG, I know you guys have talked about how playing every other day since June 2nd. Uh, no excuse, it's just the scope in front of you, but this is your 10th game with 40 or more minutes this postseason. Are you doing, like, what does recovery for you look like post game? Are you doing anything different than you would during the normal season because of the workload and the more compressed time frame? Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot. I mean, I, I lift after games, you know what I mean? Playing 40 plus and, and I still find time to, to lift. And um, it's just, it's, it's part of the, of the process um, with massage, cold tub, hot tub. Um, 
you know, BFR, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. It's the reason why, you know, I kept you guys so long. Um, it's a process. I'm well aware of the process. Uh, regardless of how long it takes, um, I got to do it. And, um, you know, it's, just, it's what's keeping me going. BFR, what's that, what's that do? Uh, it's a lot to break down. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to go. It's, it's, it's basically some blood flow work um, that kind of, Tricks your body, tricks your muscles, um, uh, but it's great for recovery for me. Hey, Paul. Um, coming into the series, Devin was one of the hottest scorers in this league. Um, played great in game one. What, what do you think the biggest change has been these last two games with him? And kind of, I, don't, I would bet you don't expect him to be up there 35% to kind of go forward. So, um, but what, what have you seen that, that you think you guys are going to be um, that's, that sounds like game plan talk. Um, next question. Go, Mary, go ahead. Uh, when you guys have fallen into these O and Or Melissa, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go. I call that somewhere. It's fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Paul, when you guys have fallen into these O and two holes, I'm curious, has anybody emerged as like an especially home leader? What is, what is your guys' screen chance like during this time? Um, <laughs> You know, our leaders, myself, Kwai, uh, Pat Bev, Rondo, um, Marcus. Uh, I think it's what's so great about this team. We have so many vets um, that we can lean on. DeMarcus plays a role in, in leadership in the locker room. and um, It's just great. We got so many guys that want this, um, so many guys that are, are in, in, lost in this moment um, that, you know, we, we just stay together. We know that we have a real possibility to do something special. And, um, you know, we're going to give everything we have. I think what the beauty is, is we're happy with the results. Uh, win, lose, or draw, um, this team is, is, is going to be happy with the results. We put so much into this season. Uh, we've invested so much into each other. Um, we're going to live with the results. And um, I think that's the beauty of it. Well, Jameer, last one. Paul, oh, I know you've talked about Terrence before, but. I think he started more of like an energy guy for you guys at the bench you're starting. Um, you know, it really seemed like he, he changed the, the defense for you guys at the guard play with Chris and Devin, allowing you to sort of take defensive plays off of it. How, how has his just development over the year really helped you guys, you know, now? Uh, I mean, well, that's it. You know, he's, uh, he's taking big matchups, key matchups for us. Um, and uh, on the other end, you know, he's, he's, uh, very helpful. He's spreading the floor. He can attack. He can finish around the basket. Um, you know, and, and he just makes us that much more lethal, um, especially in our small ball game. Because uh, he's a big size. He's he's got size on him, um, and uh, it, it just it, it makes us be a lot more versatile defensively, where we can switch, we can guard multiple positions, um, and so it's it's great. He can get out. He's athletic. Um, he allows us to play faster when we can get the ball up to him. And, he can attack, use his body to make plays. And, um, you know, he's been special. He's been special this whole postseason. Um, and, you know, you're just going to see more and more of it. For, for a young player, I, I, still learning how to use his body, length, all that stuff, how have you helped him sort of figure out how he can, you know, be in passing lanes or cut to the basket and be effective that way? Uh, I mean, it's, I can't take credit for that. Um, he's such a great instinctive player. A lot of what he does is just instincts, um, and you can't teach that. I think that's one of the best skills that you can have if, is, is if a player has those instincts to just make plays um, and uh, a teammate has them.